In this lesson, we're beginning a discussion of nuclear chemistry. Now, notice that nuclear chemistry is very different from much of the rest of, of chemistry uh, because nuclear uh, is derived from the word nucleus. And so when we talk about nuclear chemistry and nuclear science, we're talking about what's happening with the protons and the neutrons inside the, the center of the atom. Now this is very different from almost all of the rest of chemistry because generally speaking chemical reactions uh, take place because of electrons. Uh, perhaps electrons are being shared or being transferred but that's what chemical reactions are all about. Well in this chapter, in this lesson, we're talking about something completely different and that's the nucleus. Now although chemical reactions involve electrons, the fact is that nuclear reactions release far greater amounts of energy. For example, uh, if we have a chemical reaction that goes bad, uh, perhaps the worst thing that could happen would be uh, oh, possibly an explosion, uh, perhaps a building could burn down, or there could be some sort of uh, a contamination of an area, of a localized area. On the other hand, as uh, most of you are probably aware, if a nuclear a reaction goes badly, the worst thing that could probably happen would be, well, possibly the destruction of entire cities or even countries or, uh, as maybe some people have heard about in movies, maybe even the, the end of civilization as we know it. And that's, of course, a, a very uh, uh, extreme example. But the point is that nuclear reactions release huge, much far greater amounts of energy. We're talking about exponentially greater. Now before we start talking about uh, what type of reactions take place in the nucleus or because of the nucleus, let's talk about symbols of isotopes for a few minutes and review that. This is something that we've learned earlier in the course, but let's take a look at this symbol right here. The symbol K, of course, represents the element potassium, and then we have two numbers. The top number right here is called the mass number. And the mass number is equal to the sum of the protons plus the neutrons in that atom. And so we can use that number to find protons plus neutrons. On the other hand, this number on the bottom, that's called the atomic number. And the atomic number tells us the number of protons in that, in that particle. And so you can figure out that if you want to find the number of neutrons, you have to subtract the top number minus the bottom number. And so, for example, if we were to ask how many protons are in that, hopefully you'd realize that it's just equal to the atomic number. It's 19. But how many neutrons are in that? Well, once again, we have to subtract the mass number minus the atomic number. Top number minus bottom number. So 39 minus 19 is equal to 20. Now let's try another example. Let's say we have a particularly radioactive isotope. Uh, this is U, and that's the symbol for uranium. And the mass number is 235, and the atomic number is 92. And by the way, the way, uh, the way that we would read this uh, this isotope, or the name of this isotope, would be uranium-235. So how many protons are in uranium-235? Well, it's equal to the atomic number, which is 92. How many neutrons are in that? Well, once again, we subtract the top number minus the bottom number, 235 minus 92. So that's equal to 143. Now, what about if we were asked the opposite. Let's say this time we have a nucleus with 38 protons and 52 neutrons. Write its symbol. Well, this time we have to look at the periodic table to find out what element would have 38 protons. Well, if we look at the periodic table, we see that the, that the element with atomic number 38 is strontium, which is SR. And of course, the 38 would be the number on the bottom. What number would be on top? Well, that would be the mass number, which is the sum of protons and neutrons. So 
whatever 38 plus 52 is, that's 90, that would be the number on top. And so that's the symbol. This would be uh, called strontium 90, which by the way is a, uh, a very radioactive isotope. It's one of the products that's given off in certain types of nuclear explosions. It is particularly toxic. Now, when we talk about nuclear changes uh, and nucle uh, the nuclei uh, in atoms, we have to admit that the vast majority of isotopes are stable. And so, for example, 99%, uh, in fact, well, more than 99% of the uh, carbon atoms in your body are stable. They could uh, sit around for hundreds of years or thousands of years or millions of years. And as far as we know, they're not going to change into any other element. They're going to stay as carbon. So they're not radioactive. However, uh, there is a very small percentage of atoms, of isotopes, that are not stable. And they will just spontaneously, on their own, decay into other things. So, for example, of all the atoms of carbon in your body, a very, very small percentage, say uh, less than about a tenth of a percent, would be radioactive carbon. And over the course of a few hundred or thousands of years, some of those atoms of carbon are going to decay just spontaneously on their own into atoms of nitrogen. And that's called nuclear decay. And so when we talk about radioactivity uh, and nuclear changes, we're talking about these atoms that will just spontaneously turn into other things. And when that happens, when this nuclear decay takes place, one of the products is called ionizing radiation. And that's, that's a key term. Because in this lesson, we're going to learn about five types of ionizing radiation. When we talk about radiation in this course, that's what we're talking about. Not the general type of radiation that is just uh, the, the, the way that, that light uh, is transported. Uh, the uh, sunlight reaches the earth by means of radiation. That's not necessarily ionizing radiation we're talking about. Well, let's talk about these five types. The first type would be called alpha particles. And alpha particles have this symbol right here. The mass number is 4, the atomic number is 2, and it has the symbol, uh, which is the Greek letter alpha, looks like a cursive A. Now, alternatively, you might notice that uh, the atomic number 2 happens to be helium, and so it's also okay to write it like this, 4 over 2 He. That's another way of writing the symbol of an alpha particle. Basically, an alpha particle is just the nucleus of a helium atom. Now, as far as radiation goes, this is by far the largest type of radiation. It is the heaviest. And as a result, it is the least penetrating. And so, for example, that's like if you take a, uh, a chain link fence and you try to throw a baseball through that chain link fence. Well, the baseball is larger than the openings in that fence. And so the fact is the baseball is not going to be able to get through. And it's the same way with alpha particles. Alpha particles can't really travel through too many things. In fact, you can stop a stream of alpha particles with a sheet of paper. And so it's very easy to stop alpha particles. Now, we do have to admit that they can be dangerous if they're inhaled or they're ingested. So if you eat something that's an alpha emitter, then it can be very dangerous. It, it can kill you. For example, there's one specific type of gas called radon. And radon uh, is a noble gas. This is element 86. And it is quite radioactive. Uh, and it is a gas that, being very, very dense, uh, tends to collect in some people's basements. And so if you have a basement, it's often recommended that you have a, a radon test to see if you have this radioactive gas in there. If you do and you breathe it in, it could give off alpha particles in your lungs and can cause lung cancer. In fact, radon poisoning is uh, one of the leading causes of lung cancer in the United States. Here's another type of ionizing radiation 
They're called beta particles. And the formula for a beta particle is this right here. Zero is the mass number. That means it doesn't have any protons or neutrons in it. But its atomic number is negative one. Now what does that mean? The atomic number negative one means it has a negative charge. Now, it is much lighter than an alpha particle. This is like taking um, a, a golf ball or a bunch of golf balls and throwing them at that same chain link fence we talked about. Golf balls are smaller than a baseball, so some of those golf balls will likely be able to pass through. And so since they're smaller and they're lighter, they actually can penetrate a piece of paper and possibly even your skin. Uh, basically, a, a beta particle is just a very high-powered electron that's emitted from the nucleus. And as you might remember from an earlier lesson, electrons have that negative charge. And so these are very high-powered electrons. If you want to stop a beta particle, you need something a little bit more heavy-duty like glass or wood or a piece of aluminum. Now, a third type of ionizing radiation is the gamma ray. And this is uh, sometimes considered the scariest of the ionizing radiation. It has a symbol of zero over zero, and that's the Greek letter uh, gamma. Um, it has no mass. It has no charge. And so since it has no mass, it's basically just a very high-powered ray of invisible light. And since it has no mass and really no size, it's the most penetrating. And so this is like if you take a handful of sand and throw it at that same chain link fence. Almost all of it is going to pass through. And so it takes a whole lot more to stop a stream of gamma rays. Your skin will not stop it. Uh, plywood will not stop it. Generally speaking, you need a wall of lead. In fact, sometimes it's said you really need something about on the order of a six inch thick wall of lead to completely stop gamma rays. And as a result, these are often considered to be the most uh, deadly type of radiation. If you hear about someone who uh, has been uh, seriously uh, injured by, by radiation, it's often because of gamma rays. For example, the firefighters that were sent into the uh, uh, nuclear core uh, to put out the fire at Chernobyl in Ukraine in 1986 were fried by the gamma rays. It was very, very deadly. So uh, that's sometimes considered the scariest type of radiation. Now, a fourth type of ionizing radiation, we sometimes classify neutrons in this group. And there's the symbol for a neutron. Uh, it has an, a, a mass number of one. It doesn't have any charge, though. So its atomic number is zero, lowercase n. And we know neutrons as being a subatomic particle. They exist along with uh, protons in the nucleus. These are considered to be one of the heavier types of radiation, the second heaviest type. And as a result, they're not, they're not especially penetrating, but they're important because they're usually used to start a fission reaction. And we'll talk more about that in a future lesson here in this, in this uh, chapter about nuclear chemistry. Neutrons are often emitted along with other types of radiation, sometimes with alpha particles or gamma rays or something on that nature. It's generally pretty easy to stop a neutron or to stop a stream of neutrons. Usually a piece of plywood is enough to stop it. Now the fifth and final type of ionizing radiation we're going to talk about in this lesson will be positrons. And the symbol is a little bit unusual. It's 0 over 1 E plus. So that means its mass number is 0, so it doesn't include any protons or neutrons. Its charge is 1. That's a charge of 1, and it is positively charged. And it has the symbol E. So that sounds like it's an electron. And it is, but this is an unusual electron. It's a strange, positively charged electron. And so uh, this is a very unusual, it's basically a, a beta particle with a positive charge. Very unusual. And so it stopped by glass, wood, or aluminum, just like a beta particle would, but it has the opposite charge. 
And so in this lesson, we've talked about these five types of ionizing radiation, alpha particles, beta particles, gamma rays, neutrons, and positrons.